Hello and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren and today I'm going to be learning about how uh, ice cream was weaponized in World War II. This is another fat electrician video so do go ahead and make sure you give him some love and also let me know what else by the fat electrician you would like me to look at. Um, or Kit. You can put that in the comments below as well. Uh, I'm excited. Um, this one was directly suggested to me, so here I am, watching the fat electrician discuss World War II. This is a short one, so let's go. Oh boy, this video is going to be aggressive. Today we're talking about the biggest logistical flex of all time, the sheer amount of ice cream the U.S. military managed to eat in World War II. Buckle up, because it's going to get weird. In 1943, the U.S. military managed to eat 135 million pounds of ice cream. I Sorry. 135 million pounds. My boys. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know how you guys want to quantify that, like elephant meters or kilo elephants. It's 10,384. Write that down. Moving. 10,384 elephants? Americans will use anything but the metric system, am I right? Gone. Hey, real quick, this video is brought to you by my favorite sporting goods store, Shields. They've got over 30 retail locations across the U.S. and an even better online store that offers price matching and satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. So if you need anything from camping gear to sporting goods to casual clothes to work clothes, make sure to go check out Shields in person or I'll have their link in the description down below. Back to the video. Why on earth was the American military eating so much ice cream? Couple of reasons. Reason number one, America, because America's always number one and we can. Buh, you're so dumb. America's not number one and the metric system's better. Buh. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of the metric system. <laughs> like USA. Look, first of all, you're ruining my story. Second of all, I have no idea what the metric system's doing for you, but I do know the only reason you're not doing it while speaking German is because of America and fractions, so show some respect. As I was saying, reason number... Someone explain that to me, please. Number two, it's complicated. You see, it all started on January 17th, 1920, when the 18th Amendment went into effect and America would begin the noble experiment, aka prohibition, alcohols banned across all of the U.S. Because of Lame. this, pretty much overnight, all the bars in America turned into ice cream parlors. Oh, yingling. I used to drink a lot of yingling. I had to stop. Rather than go out of business, an ice cream stepped up to fill the social void left by alcohol. If you're not picking up on a put down, I'm trying to tell you that ice cream is essentially the new booze. And I know what you're thinking. Why on earth would the American government ban alcohol? It's the land of the free, the home of the brave, and now you can't even enjoy a beer? That doesn't make any sense. But apparently America had a severe drinking problem back then, so the government had to step up and ban alcohol because they care about our health. Pretty sure it was just a bunch of uh, right wing ladies <laughs> like it was like moms or something wasn't it like who were just like people are having fun we can't have people having fun it's demoralizing to watch people have alcohol also masturbation makes you go blind and grow hair on your palms like dracula you know those people Right. And then to prove how much they cared about our health, once people naturally started making their own booze at home using industrial alcohol, they started mandating to all the manufacturers of industrial alcohol that they had to put methyl alcohol inside of it, which is poisonous to people. Which as a result led to over 10,000 Americans being poisoned to death during prohibition by their own government because the government wanted to make them healthy. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. But at least there is a silver lining because <laughs> prohibition's how we got NASCAR with a bunch of rednecks hop. Oh my God, he said that ironically. What? <laughs> from the government and I'm here to help. Okay up their cars so they could outrun cops. And then naturally they wanted to see if they could outrun each other and bada bing, bada boom, NASCAR is born. Lock I love that. I'm going to keep pausing. I'm sorry. That's awesome. I want to hear that story again about NASCAR. Because prohibition's how we got NASCAR with a bunch of rednecks hopping up their cars so they could outrun cops. And then naturally they wanted to see if they could outrun each other and bada bing, bada boom, NASCAR is born. A lot of left turns. Anyways, the point I'm trying to get across to you is the majority of the people that served in World War II grew up. A lot of left turns. Have you seen that? <laughs> Have you seen that uh, meme? 
the or the the vine or whatever it was. I'll 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 put it in. I'll pull it up. I'll find I it. started drinking at six a.m. and we're here now. I don't know what time it is, but I'm rolling deep, and those cars are going real fast and real left, son. They're going fast and left. Fuck yeah! <laughs> in an era where their alcohol was ice cream meaning that they're gonna do all the ridiculous shit that military members do for alcohol but they're gonna do it for ice cream i mean during the korean war the cbs stole a train full of booze and during world war ii in 1942 when the uss lexington an aircraft carrier got sank by two torpedoes while the ship was sinking the crew decided that it was very important that they raided the mess hall first to take all the ice cream with them they were literally sitting in life rafts eating ice cream out of their helmets. The crews for B-17 and B-24 bombers used to take ice cream mix, put it inside of ammo cans, and then stick it inside the ball turrets when they went on a bombing run. Because then if they made it back after successfully bombing the enemy, the ball turret got cold enough and there was enough turbulence that it would both chill and churn the ice cream. So then they had fresh ice cream afterwards. There were That's amazing! ice cream factories that would follow the front line just be behind it and deliver fresh ice cream to the front line every day. And then we get Amazing. the absolute pinnacle of logistical flexing the ice cream ships of World War II. Yeah, the Navy had three of these things. They could make 500 gallons of ice cream a day. They had enough refrigerated storage to hold 2,000 gallons. And their entire job was to make ice cream and deliver it around the Pacific Theater. That's fantastic. Try What happens when you try and say phenomenal and fantastic at the same time? Uh, that's, and especially because refrigeration was still such a new technology. That's great. Now, to be fair, it's technically not a ship. It was a concrete barge. If you don't know the difference, a barge doesn't move under its own power. It's basically got to be pulled around by tugboats. Also, when I say concrete barge, a lot of people seem to misinterpret it and think that it was a barge that was used for mixing concrete and then they retrofitted it to make ice cream instead. That's not what happened. It's literally made out of concrete. During World War II, pretty much everything was being rationed and the U.S. military experimented with making boats and barges out of concrete, like the USS Quartz was completely made out of concrete. And then later, after they determined that the barges sucked, the U.S. Navy took three of them, spent a million dollars on each, retrofitted it into an ice cream factory. And not only is this the biggest logistical flex of all time, it very well may be the biggest morale changing factor ever. I mean, think about this. It is 1945 and these guys are eating a frozen dairy treat 2,000 miles from home and the enemy is literally 15 miles from home and they can't get food. Do you have any idea what effect it would have on your morale if you were the bad guy in World War II and you haven't eaten in three days, but it's okay because you have a superior warrior culture and your team's gonna pull through and you're gonna win because go team, you guys got this. And then the Americans come over the hill with flamethrowers and fucking ice cream cones. Maybe, just maybe, you're on the wrong side of this argument. That's like the star-spangled Darth Vader, okay? Come to the red, white, and blue side, we've got fucking ice cream. So in conclusion, booze and ice cream are on the same level of awesome. And next time you go out to a restaurant, and you see that little old man with the black hat on the front that says he's a veteran eating ice cream out of a little dish for dessert. You know what's up. Thanks for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. All right. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, God. That's so funny. I had no idea. I had no idea. That is. All right. I mean, I knew that ice cream was a big deal in uh in in the middle it still is like I've, i mentioned this before um my brother is, is a merchant marine and like they one of the things that they bring to the navy ships as well as you know bullets and stuff is ice cream and the ice cream is still like the most important it's still the thing that they want the most it's still their favorite thing so, so the more things change i guess the more they stay the same i don't know if that's actually still true that's like that was what he told me a couple of years ago so we'll see uh amazing um i really liked that <laughs> really short why is it so short i wanted to know more about that that's awesome <laughs> sorry i paused a lot but i felt like it was like I, there was stuff that i wanted to say and stuff that i needed to let sit for a second um like you know but that's incredible good job us ice cream 
I didn't know. I had no idea. I, I was into World War II. Like, I was, when I was, like, 10, I went through a World War II phase. Um, and I, uh, that was not in any of my books. That was not in any of the things that I read about World War II. So, anyway. Uh, it's, it's nice to hear nice things, you know? It's, it's nice to hear, but like, the sort of non-horrific things about world, the, that era, about that war. Um, because most of the things that you hear about World War II are really rough. So, I mean, and that makes sense why ice cream would make you feel better. So, good job, ice cream, I guess. Also, boo prohibition. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, make sure you leave me a like and a uh, and you can subscribe as well. Um, also, make sure you let me know what else you want me to look at. And I will see you all in the next video.